Uh, you can, they probably still can see it. Um, yeah, you can leave it off. I can still see pretty good. Um, my eyes aren't as good as it used to be as 10 years ago. So that's been the debate with my wife and myself and my kids. Last night I was sitting at the kitchen table and my daughter comes up, you need your glasses. <laughs> when I was looking at my cell this morning, my wife was doing that again. So I don't know, they say when you start getting your, four, I'm 49, but somewhere I've been fighting this battle where I need glasses. It's been kind of a fight for the past five years and there's been a debate whether I should have it. And I think I probably do need it. And so I'm going to go back and forth um, as I use this. Um, we get that going yet? I was kind of wondering. I might have to play press control P. Sometimes that does it. And that was that was my worry too. But yeah, so I'll go ahead and try that. If it doesn't work, we won't worry about it. So we won't worry about technology today. So I will um, be slow enough to make sure you're um, able to follow the PowerPoint stuff, and um, we'll let the Lord lead there. Well, what a great song that was this morning. It was interesting that uh, that was one of the verses in my junior high Bible class this week. We've been talking about prophets and um, how appropriate, how God uses things um, that we don't plan. And it's amazing how that works out. And that's exactly one of the verses that we're using. So um, you can follow along as I talk. Um, I did leave some bulletin inserts in the back. If you don't have one, just raise your hand. He'll pass that around. And you can follow along. Um, I'm going to be doing a six-week series on Proverbs. And I've been really looking forward to this because sometimes when you do a series, you kind of get excited about uh, this series itself, and I've really been intrigued by the book of Proverbs for many years. And there's a lot of good truth that we can learn from. Um, I do want to give credit to credits due. Um, I've kind of spent some time looking at some of my own information uh, that I did a couple years ago, um, and then added some information from uh, one of my Bible curriculums during Sunday school, and also from... Um, the school at Temple Academy where I teach, and also the athletic director there. Uh, but I teach two or three Bible classes. Um, I've taught up to four in one year, um, and right now I'm just doing two uh, this year. And um, there's a book called Foundations for Youth, uh, Bible Study. Um, but I'll tell you right now, a lot of people think Proverbs is for youth. It's not for youth. Uh, it could be for all of us as we learn from it. And then some other resources. And so uh, you don't see the picture up there, but it kind of works out well because I wasn't planning on bringing this. I was debating back and forth whether I should bring this. But um, uh, how many of you men have a chainsaw? Raise your hand. All right. All right. Good. Good. And um, uh, I, that's actually my brand new chainsaw. Um, I've been asking and begging my wife for three or four weeks, maybe a couple months now that I need a chainsaw. And um, wives, I'm going to ask you, uh, first the men will say it's a tool, right? All right. How many of your wives say it's a toy? Okay. Um, after about eight hours in the woods trying to find any tree I could cut down, uh, my wife says this is no longer a tool. It is a toy. And how many of us seen pictures or videos where you see a person, you see a little picture in that both an insert where you see somebody trying to cut down a limb and probably not in that type of situation. That picture is kind of ridiculous, but it kind of gives you the idea where you've seen a person put a ladder up and they cut the tree branch and the tree branch swings down and hits the ladder out from under them. What happens? They plummet and we've seen a lot of different videos of that. So I'm adopted and my biological dad this past summer He's 70 years old. He might be 69. I can't, I lose track, but I know he's close to 70. He decided to climb the roof and put the ladder on the roof on top of a tree. And one of the branches came down, took out the ladder. He fell, I think it was like 27 feet, 28 feet. There's been debate how many feet he was up. 
fell and plummeted and landed on his heel and broke his heel, just shattered his heel. And I, I use this illustration because as foolishness as this can be, um, it, it kind of represents some of the foolish decisions we make, don't, doesn't it? I mean, we make some really dumb decisions. And one of the key components that I've noticed as we look in Proverbs they use the word a lot of wisdom, but a lot of things that are brought out is some opening thoughts here. Foolishness is found in many places. It is found in the inability to listen. My father could have got a, on the phone, called me, and said, hey, son, I need your help. Or my other brother-in-law, who's like 45 minutes away, I need your help, but of course... The inability to listen, we've told them, don't do things that you did 20 years ago. It does not work. So an inability to listen, uncontrolled anger, that is seen in foolishness, lying, arrogance, slander, and godlessness. These are main components that we see as somebody that is foolish. And we're going to look at Proverbs this whole next six weeks. And next week, we're going to talk about four types of people we see in Proverbs. And a fool is one of those types of people. So a lot of this background today is going to be about foolishness, fool, wisdom, combining it all together to help us understand what Proverbs is all about. But wisdom is found in a life centered on Jesus. A life we seek, seeks His glory, His desires, and His will. And the question I ask ourselves, do we live a wise life or the life of a fool? Do we live a wise life or the life of a fool? I think when we're younger, we realize we make some mistakes and hopefully we learn from those foolish ways. Um, probably my sophomore year in college, um, I had my bike and I was riding around campus and I had two friends that were girls and then one other friend that was a guy and we were outside the student commons. And I don't know what got into me. Maybe I was trying to press the two girls uh, or maybe I was trying to show how macho I was to the guy. Um, I think the guy said, hey, Hubbard. Usually college days we call him the last name, Hubbard. Or Hubby was my nickname. Uh, Hubby, why don't you try to ride your bike through the commons and see what happens? And... Um, I said, that sounds pretty cool. And, I, and I'm thinking this in my mind, and how can I show off these two girls? And this, this is a good way of doing it. I'll just ride my bike through the commons. So there's a long corridor that goes all the way by the academic classroom. So what am I doing? Waving as I go by the classrooms. Teachers aren't seeing me. And I, I'm thinking, man, I've made it pretty good. Now I'm going to cross and take a left-hand turn into the student commons area. Well, I made the turn, and I turned the corner, and I see, uh-oh, there's a resident assistant right there at the desk. And let's be honest, the resident assistant is a student, and um, he's chuckling, laughing, and he's thinking, oh, my, i got to do something about this. So um, I got reported to the dean's office, and then I, that afternoon I got a phone call, come down to the dean's office, and come and visit with the dean. And... You know, it's amazing how God uses things. For some reason, my mom had a funny perception. She was very clever. I, I don't know. And I don't know if she just was in tune with things. For some reason, she thought I did something wrong that day, and she decided to call the school. <laughs> I, I don't know. Before, I even got to the dean's office. And the dean knew what, what already happened, and he has shared with her what I did. And they decided to give me... 74 demerits, 75 you get expelled. They gave me 74 demerits. And um, so I decided to call my mom that afternoon. She says, son, and remember in Proverbs, you see a lot of things, my son, yeah. son, uh, I hear what you did today. You're going to march your rear end down to that dean's office. And you're going to apologize to them and you're going to beg for mercy that they don't expel you from that school. I, I, I use that illustration because it helps remind me of some of the foolish things I've done. Maybe some of the foolish things that you've done. I hope you could think back in your database and say, 
man, I did some foolish things and God was gracious on my life. You know, in the notes, you can start filling in um, the blanks here. Fool in the Bible is written 71 times. Think about that. It's written 71 times. I think I meant to say in Proverbs. Um, I did some research, I said two or three years ago, and I think I meant for the book of Proverbs. And the main purpose of Proverbs is to teach wisdom to God's people. The main purpose of Proverbs is to teach wisdom to God's people. My mom was trying to teach me wisdom. My dean of students was trying to teach me wisdom. And remember some of the things we mentioned about arrogance? You know, that was a little bit of my problem. I was a little arrogant. And sometimes I still have that problem. Remember in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, uh, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, the lust of the f- flesh, or the ESV says desires of the flesh, desires of the eyes, and the third component is the pride of life. I think that is one of the major part problems with a person that is foolish because we are so proud, we're so arrogant. Another point to put in the both insert, Proverbs are short, clever explanations which are easy to remember. I've always been fascinated with Harold Alfond and there have been many buildings that named after him. And I was an all-nighter a few years back. And inside the building, there was a section at the Alphonse Center in Waterville that was kind of dedicated to him and had a plaque that was on the wall. And he had these statements that he made. And they're a little proverbial. And I'm going to read off some of them that always kind of left an impression on me. Keep it simple. Don't tell me, show me. A good deal is a fair deal. Young people are the future. And here's a good one. And this definitely is scripture led. I don't think he was a believer, but listen to this statement. Always tell the truth and you never have to remember what you told someone else. You can't fool me but you can fool your body. You keep chopping wood, how appropriate, (laughs) pretty soon there'll be a pile. You know, that was one of the things I justified last week with this new chainsaw. Hey, honey, it it costs us $220 for a quart of wood. I can get a chainsaw under $300. After a while, we're going to have a couple quart of wood. We need quart of wood, so yeah. You keep chopping wood, pretty soon there will be a pile. And we definitely got a pile of wood, not a quart yet. I plan to retire 10 years after I'm dead. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot of truth to that. A lot of people, you know, they retire and they never stop working. Proverbs contain truism, truism, but also sometimes not true itself. There are things which are typically true, however, not always. For example, think of this verse from Proverbs 12, 12 11. He who tills his land will have plenty of bread. It is typically true that one who works his land will have bread, but it's not a guarantee to always be true. They are proverbs, not promises. They deal with life, principles, good judgment, and perception. They often draw distinctions between a wise man and a foolish man, with parable-type examples. And this is just a little bit of a starting point. I I really want to bring some things out, and I still got a few more things before I really get to what I want to talk about. Wisdom is mentioned 46 times in Proverbs. The word wise is mentioned 60 times in Proverbs. Open up the Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5. I'm going to pick out four or five verses that stand out and then we'll open a prayer where I want to go at. Look at these key verses that talk about wisdom. Proverbs 1 verse 5. A wise man will hear. Think about that. A wise man will hear. You know, that's sometimes the biggest thing we as believers, we don't take time to listen. 
Yesterday, I spent some time with a person that I did the funeral this summer for his, their son who passed away with cancer. And my 45 minutes with him yesterday was spending the time just listening. I didn't want to talk. I wanted to listen because I want to find out what's going on with him. I said a few words. And I know they're struggling. They are, they are our believers, but they're kind of struggling with their faith, which is justified. They lost their son. Three-year battle of cancer. A wise man will hear and will increase in learning and a man of understanding will attain unto wise counsels. Proverbs 2, verses 6 and 7. For the Lord gives wisdom out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. And if I take out the word buckler and put in these words, he is a small round shield at arm's length to them that walk uprightly. You know, Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6 talk about wisdom. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not unto what? And all your ways acknowledge who? And he will direct thy paths. Proverbs 4, verse 5 says, Get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Let's go ahead and open a prayer as we look at what God has for us today. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to study your word, to understand an important book, the book of Proverbs. All books are important in the Bible, but as we kind of look through the book of Proverbs next five to six weeks, five to six weeks, and as we look at how we gain wisdom, that we learn that we all have done foolish things, things that are wrong, and we need your guidance, we need your direction, we need wisdom. Help us to lean on the most important thing, and that is the word of God. And let's pray these things in your son's name. Amen. So I look at the book of Proverbs as the statement where I say, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. The origination of this phrase started with the head of the household, the Lord, would bathe first, followed by the men, then the lady and the woman, then the children, followed by lastly the, by the baby. The water gets so black from dirt that a baby could be actually tossed out with the bath water. I don't know how truthful this is. I've heard there's some truth, like Proverbs, there's some truth to the statement itself. And I look at Proverbs, there's some verses that were like, what in the world is being said here? It's like, one way you see it this way, and one way you see it that way. Proverbs have the same meaning to me. Sometimes I don't understand it. And I'm thinking, do I throw that out? But we don't throw out the word of God. It is hard to decipher whether it has relevance, whether it's true, or the value of its meaning. Open up our Proverbs chapter 26. Let me help you understand what I'm looking at here. And we're going to look at verse 4. And we're going to look at verse 5. Twenty-six verse four says, "Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him yourself." So we see, answer. Don't answer a fool. Then in verse five it says, "Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes." So I know there's no contradiction in Scripture, but what we need to do is need to scrub away. Dig deep to find the message, like the baby in the bathwater. Don't rule out its relevance and its importance. So I, I think maybe this is a situation where you, maybe you got to dissect who you're talking to, where they're at, 
Are they trying to just argue with you, not argue with you, struggling with an area? And so this is where I feel like, man, this is tough sometimes as we look at this. So we need to scrub away, dig deep, and find out, like the baby in the bathwater, don't rule this out. Think about this. Think what's going on. So we're going to look at Proverbs chapter 1, and we're going to spend some good time here. And I'm looking at the clock. want to be aware of that. And we're going to kind of figure out the main objectives to the book of Proverbs. I'm going to read through verses 1 through 4, and then we'll break it down as we look in our notes of what we need to do as we look into the book of Proverbs. Starting in verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteous justice and equity, to give prudence. Prudence could be put in by the word wise, to give wise to the simple, knowledge in discretion to the youth, and I even want to say not just youth, to all people. So verse 2, we look to know wisdom and instruction. First, we have to know God. What is wisdom? If I had to ask you that, I think the key verse in Proverbs, I feel, is Proverbs 1, verse 7. It says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. It's important for us to actually know God. The word knowledge is mentioned in almost a ton of verses when it pertains to wisdom. Look at Proverbs 2, verse 5. It says, Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and what? And find the knowledge of God. It tells us that understanding of the Lord comes from when we grow and our knowledge of God. The word fear implies knowledge and awe or respect for object being feared. Thus, the fear of the Lord is a growing relationship between man and his creator. This must be our thought as we read the Bible. And I think people get that misunderstood about fear of the Lord. I always call it a proper fear, a proper respect. And, I, and the best way I can illustrate this is my relationship with my adopted father. And he was a very, very wise person. He passed away this past February and battled um, uh, Alzheimer's for the past three or four years of his life. And the past six months before he passed away, it was just a downward spiral. And I'm so glad my, my kids saw my dad um, at an age to see how wise he was. And many children have the opportunity to understand their fathers or see the wisdom. And I realized the more I got to know my father, the more I understand how smart and how wise he was. He was a man that didn't say many words. Brianna, we say he was pretty quiet most of the time, very quiet. But when he spoke, how many people would listen to him? Everybody would listen. And that, that said a lot about his character said a lot about him. When I first got married, we bought our first house. And I knew my dad was extremely gifted on helping build things. And he didn't learn it from his dad. His dad died at a young age. He learned it from my mother's dad. And I was working up an old house that we had bought to renovate. And it took us about eight months before we could move in. But there was a staircase that went up and then made a turn and curved. And I bought these wood steps to put in. And after about the fourth step of $20 a piece, now I'm up to $80. I'm 22, 23 years old. No, maybe 26 when we bought this house. 
I'm getting frustrated. I don't know the words I probably said at that point. I was a young kid. But I got frustrated with the situation. And I knew nothing but to do what? Call my dad. Because I knew I had respect and awe and knew that he knew what to do. He said, son, I'll be right down there. What's the father like? Yeah, our Heavenly Father's the same way. But we don't, we don't listen sometimes. And he came over and he said, hey, yeah, you know, I've been in this predicament before. This is what we're going to do. We're going to get a cardboard box and we're going to make a schematic of this and we're going to trace it out. And this is the only way I know of doing it. There could probably be other ways of doing it. People get out angles. And, but he said, I learned this from somebody. And we had a great afternoon, finished the staircase. Why? Because I knew in my own inability, I could not do this. And I had to get on the phone and call my father. Best illustrated, how do we know to have knowledge is to know God. Verse 2, it, it doesn't just say to know wisdom and instruction, to understand the words of his insight. The second thing is, we need to know the word of God. We need to know the word of God. It gives us insight into the way God thinks and acts. Proverbs is truly the wisdom of God. As we understand it, we are gaining an understanding of God's mind. Remember verse 7 talks about, and it teaches the fear of the Lord. This is the beginning of knowledge. A man who does not fear the Lord can never gain a full knowledge of the word of God. Let me read that again. The beginning, this is the beginning of knowledge. A man who does not fear the Lord can never gain a full knowledge of the word of God. If you look at verse 2, it says that. To know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight. The third thing we see, and these are just foundational steps as we look at the word of God, as we look at the book of Proverbs. Verse 3 says, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity. Look at that again. To receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, which we know God is holy, we know that he is just, and in equity. No, to know God's principles is number three. No, the verse does not simply say to receive wisdom, etc., but to help you receive instruction of wisdom. I even put in parentheses, wise behavior. Sometimes my behavior is not wise. That is wisdom, justice, which is righteousness, judgment, and then equity, which means fairness, have something to teach us. So point number three is to know God's principles. What does it teach us about his principles? We learn who God is. We learn the principles upon which we are to walk and can conduct our lives. Look at Proverbs 2, verse 9. It says, Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity and every good path. This time they're teaching us to walk in a correct path of life. We saw that in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Path means a direction of walk in our daily lives and kinds of decisions we make. Thus, as we study this book, we learn to make right decisions in life. We learn the principles that should govern the choices we make. Hopefully, like, I'm in, high, in college where I made that dumb decision. Hopefully I learned. And as I walk in my walk with the Lord, I make less dumb decisions. I still will make some dumb decisions, foolish decisions, because our nature is bent towards sin sometimes. But we're filled with the Holy Spirit, but we still have that human sinful life. 
So hopefully our choices are directed by the path that God has for us versus us dictating our own path. Proverbs talks a lot about that. Verse 4, uh, point number 4, and we see in verse 4, it says, To give prudence, put the word wise, to the simple, knowledge, and I, I think this next word, well, you have and, and the next one is discretion to the youth. Sometimes I've made some poor decisions based off poor discretion. How many times have we made poor decisions based off some bad discretion? I mean, that's happened many times in my life. The word prudence, actually, let's give me point number four. I'm sorry, I keep on not having the PowerPoint there. It throws me off a little bit. To smooth the rough edges of life. And many times that's that discretion of not making that wise decision. I think of a situation I was in college, and I got a lot of college stuff. I think I was probably foolish, probably, all right? I think us men, they say a man doesn't actually, mind doesn't process correctly till about age 25. How many heard that? <laughs> How many have heard that? Yeah, we just, yeah, I've heard that statement. And a lot of my dumb decisions were before I was age 25. And I, I made a dumb one. I, you know, it was gotten back from extension ministry, and I'm a storyteller. I'm sorry, but I mean, it just helps me understand uh, my follies in my life, but it actually helps you understand that I'm human, and you might be able to relate a little bit to it. But it was, um, I, I just got back to extension ministry. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning. We had a long weekend, and it was actually spring break. And what I mean extension ministry, each weekend, the Bible college I went to put a heavy focus on us soaking up the Word of God during the week and then going out in the weekends and like a towel, you know, wringing it out and then actually ministering on people. And my ministry was working with youth ministry, which was, my degree was youth ministries in, uh, in Bible college. And it was important for me to realize, you know, it was an important time to minister. But that night, I got a phone call in my room, just got back like a 1 o'clock, about 2 o'clock in the morning, and one of my friends, who's a, it was a girl, she said, hey, my, my, my brother's not back. Do you know, did he want, I said, he probably just stayed for the weekend, and, and he's just there a little bit longer in the extension ministry. But I was a little peeved. She called me at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I should have been, like, really concerned. So the next day, I was doing cleaning inventory in the girl's dorm, and I was collecting vacuums, and I had a friend that was a girl, so understand I was good here. I was not bad. I, I knew a girl that was in that dorm, and I went up the hall and says, hey, can you knock on the door, look in, make sure they're decent, make sure they're not, you know, undressed. I said, please do that for me. And I decided to take the vacuum cleaner, put it in their room, shut the door, and turn it on. I don't know what I was thinking. I was so mad that she woke me up the night before, and, and I... <laughs> Guess who called me the next day? The dean of students wanted to meet with me again. Um, I had to write a paper on discretion, how to make wise decisions. I, I think Proverbs was meant for me. So uh, the word prudent subtly is an interesting Hebrew word that means naked or smooth. It's used in Proverbs 2.25. Also see it in Genesis 3.1. Describes Adam and Eve, literally smooth. And Satan being subtle or smooth, to subtle smooth is to be, we knock off the kind of rough edges or sharp edges in our ugly spots in our life. Proverb is designed to knock off the rough edges of life and my life and give graciousness or smoothness to your character and my character. Things that are sometimes I struggle with might be same things you struggle with. If he's trying to knock off these edges, maybe some of the harsh words we say, Maybe the sharp tongue. Now, how many times we can be just quickly and sharp and we have no discretion, it comes out. And we're like, we're stuck with that. Once it's out, we can't take it back and damage is done. A violent temper. I've dealt with some people that have violent tempers. Little patience with people. How many times we have don't have patience with people? Proverbs talk about that. How about quick to criticize my 11-year-old is my biggest complainer in the house. This morning, we were having breakfast, and it was just her and my 8-year-old, and the other teenagers are sleeping as long as they can. It's daylight savings, but they're still up. I'm up, having my coffee, and 
she immediately starts complaining. And so God said, all right, instead of saying complain, 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 just spell out the word complain and tell her to say it back to you. C-O-M-P-L-A-I-N. What did I say? And she stopped complaining. It worked. I don't know why God said use that. But I mean, sometimes we are quick to criticize or complain. Proverbs will knock off those sharp edges and smooth out the ugly spots in my life and your life. Verse 4, getting back to it, it also gives us purpose to life. Discretion means a plan or purpose and implies one goal, is establishing a purpose for every action. Think about that. That's what Proverbs wants to do. It means a plan or purpose and implies one goal, is establishing a purpose for every action. I have a tendency, I think we all have the tendency to be impulsive by nature. Proverbs talks about that. Sometimes we act without thinking. Like I did in that dorm. That was dumb. Lucky the dean was gracious to me because I kind of explained the story. He says, Hubbard, you're back in this room again. All right. I'm thinking, yeah, how did I make it four years? They're not getting thrown out of here. He saw something. Maybe he saw that I had a heart for God, but I was dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Discretion has another meaning, is meditation or thought. Think about that. Another meaning is meditation or thought. Think before we act or do. There's a verse in the Bible that says this, and I think we probably know this verse. As a man thinks in his heart, so is what? So is he. Yeah, sometimes some of the things of Proverbs is, so is he what we're thinking, what we're doing. Proverbs talk a lot about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save the latter part of this because I'm looking at the time and I I really have a lot to still say and I'm going to continue this, but I do have some application as we close. And usually I always finish all the notes, but I'm looking at the time and I get another five to ten more minutes. I want to get to the application of what I want to do and we'll finish these parts next week and continue in the book of Proverbs. But what I want to do for the benefits and rewards, the last point there, of studying Proverbs. I want to talk about our personal growth and us being in the Word and how important it is us understanding the book of Proverbs. It's part of a growth. It's part of a pattern where we need to be digging into His Word. And we're going to talk a little bit about that next week. But also giving guidance. But this is what I want to do. This week, I want us to all to read the book of Proverbs from Proverbs 1 to Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs 1 for November 1st. November 2nd as Proverbs chapter 2. And so on, all until we get to Proverbs 31. And we know what Proverbs 31 is about the virtuous woman. And I want us to do that as a challenge for this month as part of our own Bible time with the Lord. And then next week, I I want to supply it. And I want to take seven to eight, maybe ten minutes by saying, hey, does anybody have a verse this week from Proverbs chapter 1 that meant a lot to them? Share the verse, don't want a message, and say, hey, this is why I thought this verse. Short, popcorn, two or three sentences. And I might say, Proverbs chapter 2, what stood out to you from Proverbs chapter 2? He might say, hey, I got a verse that stood out to me. And we'll go to Proverbs 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And then each week, we'll do that before the message. And I want us to apply it. I don't want us me just speaking. I want us to actually say, you know what? This is what's standing out from the Word of God. This is how I can apply Proverbs. By reading it, looking at it, and you won't have a problem finding verses. I mean, Proverbs is loaded with a lot of nuggets. Great stuff. And then next week we'll talk about the fool, but we'll talk about key ways to understand the book of Proverbs to help us kind of dissect. Because I went over all these things about knowing God, His principles, knowing the Word of God, but keys to understand this as we look at the book of Proverbs. But please do that. Make this a challenge. Don't make this about me speaking. Make this about us being in the Word of God. It's so important. And make this a fun thing versus a drudgery thing. Oh, I got to do Proverbs chapter today. 
I got and the good thing about it is there's 31 days in November. Am I right about that? No, there's 30. There's 30. Oh, okay. That shut that down real quick. Uh, but we'll just do 31 for back to day one and when we get to probably December. I'm not sure when we get. I don't know the calendar in front of me. So just do me that favor as we close out here thinking about this and just real quickly through the points again, just to understand this is as we look at the word, let's remember the four points of objectives of the book of Proverbs. To know God, to know the word of God, to know God's principles, which is through the word of God we see. Also, to smooth out the rough edges of our own life. As we look at this, you might start saying, man, that verse meant a lot because I did some dumb stuff there. Or to give purpose to life. And next week, we'll talk about the keys to understand the book of Proverbs and talk about the four types of people we see in Proverbs. And we'll just keep on going. If we don't get to that, we'll just drag it on to the next week. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to look at your word, to look at areas of our own life that we, we need, you know, that rough edge to be smoothed away. We might be too quick to talk, too quick to speak, and then we get ourselves in trouble. But we know that you are the author and finisher of our faith, and you know you can actually work through those things, through those rough edges. Help us to be wise. Help us to show wisdom because we need to have knowledge through you, to know you, to understand your word. Help us to, as we deal with political issues to be very smart and think before we speak. Because we know that's one area right now that we could be delving into and we're so quick to react. I'm so quick to react to fight my cause, to fight my, my political view. And that's just one area in Proverbs that we can learn from. Let's pray as we look at these next five weeks, six weeks, whatever it brings us, that you help us to look at your word. And as we have a chance to work together through the book of Proverbs, that you help us to grow together and learn together. In Christ's name, amen.